Welcome to the Eagle's Nest Youth Export Incubator Season 3. In tonight's episode... What's the feedback from the men who've used this? They're always coming back. We would like to believe our quality is supreme. Are you truly standing by your product? I always rep my brand. The honest truth is you are self-sabotaging yourself. Uh, the problem is me. <laughs> well, the thing is, I got it from Gogo. But your ingredients are written Kashuga. <laughs> this season of the Eagle's Nest is proudly brought to you by ZimTrade and EcoBank, the Pan African Bank, in partnership with UN Women. Up first, a health and wellness entrepreneur who believes she has unlocked nature's secrets for the ultimate bedroom pleasure. Hello, Eagles. Hello, how are you? Um, my name is Tari Chirewa, and I represent a company called House of Moringa. House of Moringa is a health and wellness brand. So back in the day, I was very close to my grandmother. And uh, when we were growing up, she used to put some herbs in our porridge. So later on, when I uh, became older, I asked her, Gogo, what are these herbs for? You know, wh why were you putting these herbs in our... Um, in our porridge. And then she told me that um, the one that she was putting was for gas. It, it helped with gas. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So there's so many herbs that do different things. And she's like, yeah, there's so many herbs. Let me teach you one or two things. Fast forward, uh, when I was seven months pregnant, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm ready to give birth, but... I'm a bit heavy. I want to look for something that will, number one, increase my uh, lactation, and number two, also help me lose weight quickly because I really wanted to bounce back really, really fast. As you can see, yeah, my, my child is free and no gym, nothing, but uh, I think I'm okay. So um, I found a herb called Moringa. That's where I founded the company from, House of Moringa. Uh, the Moringa tree is also called uh, the tree of life. So basically, my business, uh, I wanted to say it's the house of life, uh, where we bring wellness to people. Uh, we want to promote their physical and mental wellness. So we have a wide range of products. We have uh, aphrodisiac herbs, which is our main seller. Uh, we also uh, have um, our indigenous uh, herbal teas. We also deal with uh, spices infused with moringa and other other products as well. We uh, have been looking for an export market currently, and uh, we've gone to Italy and uh, Zambia, and we saw that uh, the Zambian market has a huge potential uh, because we exhibited at the Comesa Business Forum, and uh, it was we exhibited for one and a half days, and we managed to sell 31 units in those one and a half days. Currently. Uh, on average, we in Zimbabwe, we sell about uh, 45 units and uh, our revenue is about uh, 1,100 a month. And uh, we've seen that the aphrodisiac herbs uh, take on 80% of uh, our revenue as they're very, very fast moving goods. Uh, one of our best sellers uh, for the men uh, is the King of Rounds and the River Nile. And for the women, we have... Candy floss, uh, virgin flower, and too hot like a heater. Um. <laughs> <laughs> your names, your names, are, your names on point. <laughs> so oh, wow. uh, we found that this business is really, really profitable um, because the cost of the product, the packaging, and in, in everything is about uh, four dollars, and we sell it at twenty dollars. Uh, we, we are promoting uh, small-scale farmers. That's where we harvest uh, our products from. And currently, we're looking on um, in getting uh, a grinding and um, milling facility because we just get the, the products from our small-scale farmers and uh, they process the, the, the goods. But we would want, in the future, we would want to process the goods and... Um, process the goods ourselves. I do all the formulation, 
Uh, so there are different herbs in each and every product. Hari delivers a potent pitch, capturing the judge's attention with her concept. Leslie is eager to uncover the inspiration behind these intriguing concoctions. Where did you get the formulation? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I got it from Gogo, oh, okay. uh, but she's she's late now. And I've been speaking to the elders. As we know, uh, we we have our indigenous knowledge systems, but this knowledge wasn't passed on from generation to generation. And um, yeah, I thought I should be the one who should actually take on and actually use our indigenous knowledge systems because they actually work. Okay, so I, I, I um, read through one of your packages and I think one of my first concerns is that on your list of ingredients, um, the candy floss is listed. <laughs> Stop it. The candy floss is listed on the ingredients section as kashuga, yes. meaning <laughs> it's, it's a good good, right? It's fun and games now, but for export purposes, I think it would need more specific breakdowns of extracts from this plant and maybe the pharmaceutical <laughs> name of it for it to actually be able to pass. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> the judges find themselves in feats of laughter, struggling to keep their composure. Tari's creative naming has cast an unusual ambience in the nest. Nombula wants to bring it back to business. Have you performed any clinical trials on any of your products so far? Uh, we're actually working with the University of Zimbabwe for that at the moment. But, but we've just uh, been giving our customers and they've been coming back with really, really good results. What are your Africa. qualifications? Uh, I have an undergrad in international business and uh, a master's in development studies. And you're doing the formulation? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll commend you on the packaging. Thank you very much. The naming is very catchy, very, yeah, marketable. Thank you. Um, are you truly standing by your product and your and your your promise? Because uh, this is clinical stuff. Yes, uh, there has been research on some of the products that we're using, most of the ingredients that we're using, but it's not my study. That's why we're working with the university so that I can have my own scientific results. There have been studies on these African medicines before. Okay. I think the level you're at right now, you might be able to pass something along the lines of a Zimbabwe Traditional Healers Association type certification of some form. Yeah, I'm registered with them. You are registered yeah, with them? Yeah, I am registered with them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The entrepreneur defends her claims citing ongoing research and registration with the National Traditional Healers Association. George wants to know if the products truly live up to their name. So tell me something. Um, what's the feedback from the men who've used this? They're always coming back. Okay. <laughs> They're always coming back. Okay. Yes. So always coming back means what? Uh, means that uh, they are really enjoying the product and it really works. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think my my red flag also would mm -hmm. be, you know, with traditional things. Yes. Just like with medication, if something goes wrong, yes. um, trust you me, it can go very south for you. Uh -huh. For somebody who may have high blood pressure, uh -huh. then they take this and it triggers something. Okay. So, you know, you've said how many of these have you sold? Uh, we sell on average about 45. 45, 45 per? Per month. And And how long have you been doing this? I started the aphrodisiac herbs in May last year. Tell me about your figures over the months, you know, up until now. Uh, over the year, I think it only started picking up uh, this year as we changed our packaging mm -hmm. uh, because our packaging wasn't all that. Um, over the year, I think we've made about... Three, three K, 
3K? 3K, yeah. The uncertainty in numbers may have caused the flop. Will the entrepreneur be able to boost her pitch? Or will it face a wilting fate? It's very hazy mm -hmm. because there's no dosage, no um, information on side effects. Mm -hmm. There's no information on, you know, <laughs> who to call when you have a problem. It's, I, I get the market, it's huge, mm -hmm. okay? But also the backlash can be equally as big if Definitely. this is not managed properly. Definitely. Right, because you're the first person that has branded it. Mm -hmm. You're the first person that has given it an identity and a reference point. Yeah, because most of the problems that we normally have with our traditional medicine are issues around dosages. You know, people normally have kidney failures because they do not know the right quantities to consume. Uh, there are issues around the toxicity. What is it? What's, what's the constituent that is available in there? You know, so there is also need for you to do the profiling. What is the functional ingredients? What are the functionalities? What are the key components? What are the dosages? That quantification can, can actually then help. Thank you. I think it's also very important for, for you to conduct the clinical trials, right? Okay. It's also a scientific way of validation. Okay. Yeah, to actually say um, how many people have consumed, mm -hmm. what is it, um, that, what, what is the feedback? Uh, any side effects from them. And, okay. you know, I think those guys from the university can actually then help you to do all those determination because I think the analysis side can take a bit of some time, but please push it through SARS, through government analysis, uh, veterinary uh, science lab, and also the cl clinical trials, you know, do the biostatistics, get the feedback and everything. But for me, I think... I mean, this, 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 is, this is revolutionary and well done. Thank so you yes so for me. Thank you. The entrepreneur gets a vote coupled with sound advice from Leslie. Nomvala still wants to get to know more. How do you see yourself benefiting from Eagle's Nest and what's your bigger plan for your product line? Okay, um, the mentorship, um, the, um, the networks that... Uh, uh, this this organization can bring. Uh, I think having networks is 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 really really important because your network is your net worth. And um, as for the business, uh, I want to see it grow and get into uh, the sub-Saharan Africa, also in Europe as well, um, exporting my products. Tari, I'm going to give you a yes, and why I'm giving you a yes is. I'm so curious to see how you progress in the program. Thank you. Um, it's also quite refreshing because you have pretty much defied a lot of odds, I should say, by bringing a product which is really out there. And usually a lot of people trade it under the, well, under the rug, really, because not a lot of people want to be known or associated with them taking performance enhancing substances of this nature mm -hmm. and you're really coming out there and saying hey look I can help you and you know, this is what I'm all about so it takes a lot of courage to to present a product like this and to really stand and speak so professionally about it I mean it's it's very commendable so yeah I, I wish you all the best if you do make it into the second round um, thank you and yeah just keep on with the confidence yeah thank you so much okay Tari has earned two votes so far. Wisdom expressed concerns over the absence of scientific profiling. Can he be swayed by the blend of passion and innovation? I'd like to say well done on, um, on picking up. I say this because there's so much product that we have, so much knowledge, so much, you know, history, so much uh, traditional uh, expertise that we have that is not packaged and commercialized, right? It's a lot of hard work. Once you do the work, I can guarantee you it's going to be another 10 years before anyone else goes through that same process. People are not willing to go that far. But if you can give guarantees and feedback and backup 
your, your claims, then you're well on your way. Well done. Uh, I'm keen to see this uh, succeed. Yes, and another thing, uh, please forgive the, 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 the other judges. They're really immature. But, uh, you know, I'm sure in time they'll get used to, you know, such presentation. I'm all for her. I mean, and, and, and were you not expecting it. this, the reaction? Because, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, we, we don't really talk about this in public. Yes. Yes. And, I mean, the courage for me, it's, it's, it's amazing. Well done. You know, what you've done is going a road not even traveled by many publicly. You know, and for me, it's very bold. And trust you me, a road where a lot of people don't go is where a lot of treasures are. Keep your head up wherever you're going, sell it, but make sure that you put the nitty gritties okay. that we've all mentioned. Your packaging could be a little bit better. Okay. It looks great, trust okay. you me, but there's mm -hmm. a lot better you can do Okay. on that. And um, I want to say to you, um, keep on keeping on. Thank you. And um, congratulations, four yeses. Thank you. The only way is up. Yeah, the only way is up. That's a nice tag. That is that it? Yeah, that's a You just got a tag. Yeah. Thank you so much. Put that on the king of rounds, I think. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not on the long game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, you both. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the entrepreneur flies out of the nest with a unanimous yes. The judges have decided that the business has the required stamina to penetrate the markets beyond the borders. Next into the nest is an entrepreneur who believes his craftsmanship transcends borders. I'm Tino, and I'm from Allway Clothing. Allway Clothing is an industrial clothing manufacturer who produces garments for businesses on a commissioned basis. In the past, we've mainly serviced the fashion industry and fashion retailers in and around Arare, but post-COVID, we saw a shift in our product offering to PPE, uniforms, and corporate wear. Our clients have been big fashion houses, uh, high-end retailers, mines, uh, corporates, uh, parastatals, and NGOs. We currently employ 25 people on a full-time basis, and we also employ 18 people on a part-time basis. We are able to produce three to 500 work suits in a day and a night shift, so in a 24-hour shift. We are currently grossing uh, north of $35,000 in a calendar month, and our margins range from 20% to 120%. So why exports? We took a microscope and we looked at the SADC region. Zambia is the second biggest producer of copper, second only to Congo. Botswana is the second biggest producer of diamonds, second only to uh, Russia. Mozambique has got coal and natural gas deposits, and South Africa has got an abundance of minerals. This, gave a, this means that there's a big market for PPE, as this industry cannot function without the PPE. At the same time, with the AFCTA um, deal in the pipeline, this should bolster infrastructure and development within the SADC region, which again increases the market. Allway has managed to be competitive in, the, in Zimbabwe, and we believe that we can take our talents abroad and bring in the foreign currency much needed in Zimbabwe to boost the GDP and to also streamline our processes, as even though we source all our raw materials locally for production, we have to pay for those in foreign currency. So Eagles, can you help take all the way to export? The entrepreneur delivers a finely crafted pitch, but now it's time to face the Inquisition. George is the first to assess if the business is the right fit for export. Your industry has a lot of competition and um, there has to be something unique about you. We've got household names, I'm sure you know them, yes. where if you walk in, they are stocked up and they've got those work suits at very competitive, reasonable prices. 
So what is your price? And um... So our price at the moment, uh, we can retail a standard worksuit with reflectors anywhere from $10 to $12, depending on the quantity that you've ordered. So the higher the quantity, the lower the price. But $10 is our minimum price per worksuit. That's very competitive. And, yes. and w- w- what can you say about the quality of your product compared oh. to locally, you know, the major players that are here and internationally? Of course. We would like to believe our quality is supreme. Um, we pay attention to the smallest of details because of our background from fashion. So unlike other basic PPE producers, they don't pay attention to the small things. I'm more concerned about how you see yourself competing in that regional market in an area where you've got countries like China that mass produce uh, PPE. How much um, research has given you this confidence that you would be able to perform at a competitive scale in those countries? Uh, We think the capacity that we're currently producing at is enough to satisfy any big mines or any big retailers such as builders, uh, builders warehouse, uh, even in Zambia. So we're able to meet their supply as and when they request. Competing with China, yes, is always something that is uh, ever ever present. Um, But sometimes the wares that come in from China, especially when we're talking about PPE, they're not at a high standard that you would want them to be. The fabric that we source locally here from Zimspin or Kadoma Textiles is of a superior quality and of a big, of a thicker gauge um, than that that comes from China. Um, export has been something that we've been looking into, but we've never known how to go about it. But from just anecdotal evidence, so to speak, um, a work suit in Zambia, for example, retails at twenty dollars. We're able to produce and deliver that same work suit. Uh, for $12, to land it in Zambia for $12. Tino paints a compelling picture of improved margins outside the borders. On the flip side, Wisdom is keen to delve into the local impact of the business. So tell us more about what you've done so far in Zim as a market. Okay, so in Zimbabwe, Mm -hmm. uh, we've been privileged enough to service um, a bunch of parastatals. You said how much you're making a month? Uh, 35,000. Okay. So um, what, in terms of volume-wise, you know, you can, you can do three, four worksuits for an individual or a corporate. What volumes are you talking about? Oh, volumes. So our minimum order quantity currently sits at 50 units uh-huh. for any individual item. Okay. Yeah, I, I think... Another thing is, I, I see most of your business is in parastatals, right? But from the, when you gave us a frame, I thought maybe most of your business is in the mining sector, uh, you know, because your, it's, it's like your push factor to be in business is because there's a lot of diamond in, in Botswana, a lot of gas in Mozambique, you know, a lot of minerals in South Africa and Zimbabwe. It seems as if your research was around the mining sector. But to my surprise, is your business is more skewed to parastatals. How, how are you going to harmonize that? The reason why I mentioned the parastatals is because currently that is what is choking production at the moment, uh, trying to satisfy um, those guys. But we are constantly pounding the pavement and we are constantly trying to um, enter supply list uh, for some mines. At the moment, we've only gotten to uh, mines, but we are working on getting bigger traction within that sector. As we see, that sector has got the, the biggest growth potential. Although Tino is firm in defense of the model, the tender-based approach appears to ruffle the feathers in the nest. Nombala calls for a second look at the numbers. You know, you spoke of $35,000 revenue in a month. Yes, ma'am. Are you making $35,000 every single month or are you making $35,000 per each and every other tender? Oh, we're making $35,000 each and every single month for the last uh, three years. For the last how many? Three years. Three years? Yes, sir. Consistently? Consistently. Wow. Okay. okay. From the thirty-seven, thirty-five thousand you're making a month, what is your... Net profit. All right, the net profit fluctuates. 
Mm-hmm. Um, like, for, I'll give an example of sometimes we have to produce the suits that you wear and we have to provide those suits. Because of how complex that garment is, the margins in that month will be probably from the 35,000, we're sitting around 17,000 in net because we have to put a high margin on your garment. But when we're talking work suits, yeah. our, our net, <clears throat> Our net for these worksuits, when it's just been production of these worksuits, will be sitting around possibly 5,000. Because these are low margin, high volume. So 5,000 is your net profit? Yes, these are low margin, high volume. Tino boldly states an annual revenue of nearly half a million dollars with slim profit margins. Now, George wants to understand his distribution channels. Do you have a showroom where you sell anything? Or you're only making on demand? Uh, we only make on demand. Yeah, I don't think that's a viable business uh, in the long term. You know, one thing about getting these big uh, parastatos, uh, the day that you don't get them shows the true caliber of an entrepreneur you are. And not catering for anything less than 50 to me is a no-no because your sector, there are plenty of people. If you go downtown Humbare, you will see all of these things put in shopping malls per side, and it, so I can get it immediately, right? I don't have to come to you because it's not everybody who's got 50. Mm. Get it correct? Then I'll automatically go to your competitors because I can't meet 50. You don't even have 50 employees. So how are you, where are you going to buy your work suits if yours is on minimum order supply? So yes. you, you can't say no to any money. It's important. If somebody wants four work suits, you need to be able to have a standard. And it's very rare to get people who want it customized. If it's a builder or it's a carpenter, somebody just wants protective wear to wear. The other bigger corporates, no one other should also design in a specific way. So, you know, cater for that as well. I don't think... Um, you've saturated Zim as yet. You may think you have with the big orders you have, but take those away. Trust me, you won't be able to even cater for the 25 employees you have because right now you're, you know, getting jobs on this. So for me, I'm going to give you a no. Parting advice, but no endorsement from George. Will Nomvola see a profitable export future for the startup? You articulate very well what it is that you want to do. But from a perspective of Eagle's Nest, yes, you could probably make it into the second round. But currently, I don't see you making it past that. Why I'm saying that is because right now, it seems your business is based more on you winning a tender to supply municipalities, to supply parastatals. I'm not seeing enough grind out of you in terms of being able to gap fill when tenders are not there because it's not like every single day you'll be able to get that tender. It's a no from me for now, yeah. It's not looking good for the entrepreneur as two judges vote no, casting a shadow over the prospects of export. Now, will the remaining judges turn the tide? You have mastered the art of mass production. Mass production does not involve a lot of branding and you know that kind of, It's just producing, you, you know, that kind of a thing because you want to manage the cost so that the price can actually. And I'm seeing also capacity to say if you can get 35,000 from accumulatively seven working days, you can actually make 140,000 from utilizing the entire month. You know, so to me, I'm going to give you a yes on the basis that in Zambia, as you mentioned, the work suit can be sold at $20. Here is sold half the price. So there's actually more potential to grow the business out there. So based on that, you know, that your current capacity and also the potential that the export market can give on this model to you, I'm giving you a chance to actually probably explore more but being cognizant of all the things that have been said here to say that customized, you know, approach can actually then give you more leverage to what you're doing. Yes, sir. Thank you. You've shown so far that you're utilizing your capacity on the production side, which is the side that you've mastered, 
right? Now we're going to the marketing side, you know, trying to get more people wearing your work suit. How are we going to do that? How are we going to uh, get more people in Zimbabwe first, right? Uh, with your product before going out there. But, but the margins are low. The margins are low, yes. So why, why not give him a chance to then go into a more viable market? But are we saying because Zambia... Because he's, his, he's not using his capacity. But I mean, with the same capacity, with the same output, you can No, but Leslie, Leslie, Leslie let's, let's look at free market, okay? Yeah. Beyond the tender. Free market, as in Monday to Friday. My we worry are, is we, we shoot down this guy who has got the capacity to then, you know, expand. No, it's not and shooting then, down. And, and we're we're, 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 we're trying to understand the full model. A pilot project, you know, but we have got all the nice things that we want to. So we also need to be cognizant of the fact that he, I mean, guys, being able to produce 500 work suits in a day is not a joke. Leslie, are you saying in Zambia there aren't guys like him who can also make these works at a cheaper price? Because but he's if, just giving if, us a standard from no, but, the big but if, players. If if they are if the guys are there, right, and if the market allows him to go and fetch an extra ten dollars, why not then? Have you been to Zambia? Propel him to yes, to do this. Have same. you seen the products in Zambia? Yes. Compared to you, which one is better? I always rip my brand. You've shown production capabilities um, and the garment is good. The once-off tenders and big deals uh, over a sustained period of time, they dry up, okay? Because you want a sustainable uh, business model that keeps the salaries and the overheads covered, okay? I'm going to give you an opportunity to come back in the next round. Thank you, Wiz. Right? And I want to see more of the unique product and what you're actually offering that is different that will get you that extra $10 in Zambia. You can't go to Zambia with the same product and want more money. Right? You're an outsider first and foremost. But when you go into that market, you must show your unique uh, product and why they should pick yours for that extra $8. You must earn it, right? So I believe that this program will give you an opportunity to do so. And in the next round, yeah, I think we need to see a vast improvement. Say yes from me. It's, it's a 50-50 now. What, what, what does the, the, the rule entail? <laughs> yeah. For me, I, it's, it's unfortunate that your minimum order is 50, correct? So none of us here can come and get work suits from you because For you, yeah. you won't. Yeah. So you've got a market, Yema Tender, but you don't have a market for us. So none of us here can give you our money because we don't have the 50 employees. Mm. So where else should we get our work suits? We're going to give our money to somebody else. So your, your business strategy is not right because we'll go focus on those guys. So George, you need my if, ten. If you need Leslie's. If, if you need remodels, are you going to reconsider? No, let's hear from him. Is, is your target market the big people, fifty and above? Are you going to remain like that? No, we we are able to tweak it. I'm, I'm taking all of this on board. We are going to try cater for lower numbers. Okay, so so with that, I think um, they've given you two yeses. Yeah. I will give you the benefit if you're going to. Um, put that into Even consideration. if somebody requires a jacket without the top, please just provide. Okay. <laughs> I think this is the first SME you must approach. He really wants the work suits. But, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm very interested. Your 50 number was way off me. But <laughs> he I'm, was offended. As I was very see. offended that, you know. I apologize. So. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. Hopefully we'll see you progress even further in the program. I will convert you to a yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you. much, Tino. Cheers. Next is an entrepreneur who discovered the essence of their business in a deeply personal journey.
Crystal's Aura, a convergence of personal care, African tourism, and environmental consciousness. Hi, I'm Crystal. I'm the Chief Inspiration Officer of uh, Crystal's Aura. We formulate products made with oils and extracts uh, indigenous to the South, East, North and West of Africa. And of course, with a special focus on our motherland, Zimbabwe. What started as a labor of love by a mother for a son with eczema turned into a business late 2019 and has made more than 30,000 in revenue and um, more than $6,000 in net profits during the period with me working by myself from my kitchen. Our focus as a brand is alleviating discomfort and building confidence caused by skin conditions like eczema, acne, hyperpigmentation, and dark spots. Our best-selling products, our goat milk products, um, and in my capacity and in, with the resources that we have, Currently, I can make roughly 250 products per day uh, on my own. Um, Crystal's Aura is a mid to high end brand with our cheapest product being $5. And our most expensive product currently is uh, going for $20, which is our face and body lotion, Hammer Mint. We have managed to export our products to our clients in the UK, US, Canada, and UAE, and South Africa. And we would like to grow our brand into a strong network marketing brand, um, which is e-commerce based. Thank you. A confident pitch by the entrepreneur Crystal unveils the export potential of skincare wisdom from Africa. Will this concept resonate globally? Nomvula is first with the questions. Thank you for that very impressive presentation you've given. You seem very well informed about your brand and the business that you've been running. So very well done to you on that. You. I think my opening question to you is, how do you see yourself benefiting from uh, Eagle's Nest's uh, incubator program? All right. Um, our products, from uh, what we have seen, we have a lot of demand outside of Zimbabwe, outside of this Zimbabwe. And um, I don't have the knowledge, or I have some of the knowledge of shipping out of the country and all, but some of that uh, knowledge, I know Zimtrade and even Eagle's Nest can be able to to really educate me on how it can be done and also how to tap into the export market, plus also uh, increasing my production capacity with their resources and knowledge. Right. Could you kindly tell us about your financials and currently maybe let us know about your fastest selling goods? It has been quite slow at the beginning of this year. Although before that, we have sold as much as 450 units a month. But uh, beginning of this year up to now, we have sold roughly 250 units combined in all the months. They have been quite slow. Um, for our retail sales prices, we make a profit, we sell our products at three times to four times the cost of production. Um, if it's wholesale, it's two times the cost of uh, production. For retail, it's four, three to four times. So for the past six months, like I had said, we have sold roughly 250 units only. If you managed to then track why your sales have dropped from or your performance last year and this year, because 250 is like your daily production, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a bit worried about that. What, what has really happened? Have you gone back to track the yes. issues around that? Uh, the problem is me. <laughs> the problem is me. Whilst I was focusing on rebranding, because this is a rebrand, whilst I was focusing on rebrand, I dropped the ball. In terms of marketing, I totally went quiet on our social media platforms. I was so focused on the new packaging that I also didn't want to put into the market the old containers that we had. So I kind of 
faded into the shadows. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons that. So you're doing the production and the marketing yourself? Yes. Okay. Yes. Crystal exposes a dip in the revenue, taking ownership of the downturn. Now, George probes into her distribution channels. And what are, what are your distribution channels? Where All are you right. selling these products? Uh, Crystal's Aura is an e-commerce, a direct-to-customer business. So we sell from our social media channels and our online store, uh, crystalsaura.shop. Uh, so I'm on your, your page here, okay? Of the four products that are on display right now, two are out of stock. Okay, the Mafura butter and the Moringa oil. Okay, with a production capacity of 250 units per day. How is this possible? We have a product line of, uh, we have 16 products so far. It's out of stock actually because the website, the online store has also been going through rebranding. So there were a lot of orders that were coming in and I couldn't meet that uh, demand. So that is actually an issue I have to address with um, the graphic designer, that he needs to show that the product is in stock. If you notice, most of the products are saying out of stock on the website. Yeah, and yes. uh, you're an online e-commerce business. Yes. So it doesn't follow that your main platform of distribution has these glitches. Wisdom uncovers a significant flow. Most products on the website are hauntingly out of stock. This revelation cast a shadow over the aura, leaving the judges doubting the viability of the concept. My biggest concern right now is when I look at your labeling, I can't actually see the contents of it past the bigger part where it's written, the goat milk soap. Everything else that is detailed here, the print is way too small that I can't actually see what other ingredients are in this past the key name that you've put on it. Okay. So that for me is a big concern because if I don't know you or I don't have the actual interaction, your brand on its own is not selling itself. Um, those are actually makeshift labels. Our boxes <laughs> were not printed by the time I got to come here. We actually have boxes. These are sample boxes. I didn't have many of them. That's why I gave you, um, okay. Would you be especially able to bring the, the soap that's out there. So okay. it actually has boxes with uh, bigger legible fonts. Why are you using metal containers? Aluminium is infinitely recyclable. Uh, it's infinitely recyclable and it's also reusable. It can be cleaned and we can um, put new contents in. We would like to introduce um, a refill and reuse uh, part to, to our business. So that's why I chose aluminium. Aluminium, okay. And uh, bamboo is biodegradable. So we are trying to keep uh, the environmental consciousness part of okay. the brand even in our packaging. Now the main question. Is the entrepreneur ready to cast her aura on the global stage? The judges are ready to give their verdict. Um, from me, um, I am very impressed with um, what you've actually managed to do. But there's a lot that needs to be done if you're going to meet the standards of ultimately uh, what the winner is going to ultimately be defined by. So for me, it's a yes. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, as an individual, you can't slack on focusing on something and you neglect the other part. Otherwise, you'll have a good product, but it's, you know, you're, you're well stocked up and it's not selling. So you have to balance that out. And I think you'll get that, that guidance from this platform. So for me, it's a yes. Okay. I, I think there are a lot of um, foundational um things that you're still working on you're still refining your marketing distribution brand identity etc um and i think 
you know, that's going to, I mean, it's taking a lot of your time, you know. So you need to decide whether you are uh, into production or into marketing. Because if you're going to be doing both, uh, at any given time, one is going to suffer. You're going to be pushing product in the market and production is suffering. Next thing, you won't be able to meet the demand because you're spending so much time marketing. So for now, I'm going to give you a no because I think you need to go back and work on those very critical parts of your business. Crystal, I'm going to give you a yes. The reason I'm giving you a yes is because you're very aware of what needs to be done with your product. I think in some areas, though, you do need to start collaborating with someone else. If you're not collaborating, maybe employ someone, depending on what your financials as well, you know, what, what your budgets would allow. But I really do think that going forward, you will get the assistance that you need from the Eagle's Nest program. So from me, it's a yes. The entrepreneur has secured two votes, but a decisive third vote hangs in the balance. Will Leslie align with her essence, or will his earlier concerns affect his endorsement? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I think your, your story is relatable. You are trying to address a problem, um, which is good. But I think like what my other fellow judges have alluded to, the print is a bit worrisome. I try to also scan um, the, the QR code here, it's not showing. Um, I didn't see any expiry, date of manufacturer, date of expiry or on, the, or on the product. Um, also, um, I'm not sure uh, how much goat milk is produced in Zimbabwe. How, how sustainable it is to then, you know, commercialize this concept. Uh, I'm not very sure. Maybe it is. I also need to do my research. Um, yeah, I think the honest truth is you are, you are self-sabotaging yourself. Yeah, that's the honest truth. Uh, you, are, you have a lot of things. You have got a good product, good concept, but uh, the issue is around management now. You are the production manager, you are the commercial, you are, you know, the supply chain, you are everything. At the end of the day, you are failing to balance the ecosystem, and that's, that's a problem. I want to ask you, before I make my verdict, how much time do you need to clean up all these things in terms of time period to make sure everything is, is set? I have delegated. <laughs> how, how much time would you need? I would give myself 60 days. Two months. Two months to hire and delegate and make sure my production chain is... Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to give you another chance so that you attend the second round of this show. But when you come back, let's make sure all these things are cleaned up. Okay. okay. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Eagles. Crystal leaves the nest with three votes and is through to the next stage where she will receive training to improve the global competitiveness of her business. I was really impressed by House of Moringa and um, just the application and commercial application to uh, traditional uh, herbs and medicines and bringing them to uh, the fore of, our, of the industry. It's something that uh, we should you know, strive to do as a country, as a community, as entrepreneurs, to look around us at the opportunities that have been with us over time and bringing them to a commercial uh, stage by refining them and uh, packaging them, them for you know, the consumer. Our participants were presenting great ideas and something that would really seem like simple information that they should have had about their business. They would find themselves getting stuck. And usually what um, that says to us is, you're trying to do everything yourself you're not um, collaborating or trying to get, 
you know, even just a little bit of mentorship and guidance as you come onto the program, because something like that becomes a hindrance to your presentation that you give us. And we don't want to have to do the guesswork for you or preempting what it is that you're trying to do. So do not be afraid to ask for help when you come and do your presentations. I actually think if I was given the chance to actually go through this, you know, robust uh, uh, system of interrogation, refinement, I could be in a better space. You know, I could have grown faster uh, than what I've done so far. So I think to all the Zimbabweans who are aspirational, who are visionary, who are hardworking, who want to really make a mark in this country or make a mark uh, in this universe, please, this is your show. You know, there's one thing about having an idea and keeping it in your pocket, but the greatest step for an entrepreneur is to be confident enough to come forth and pitch your idea. Because when you pitch your idea, you may not win the prize ultimately, but the best thing you will get is mentorship and guidance that will help you to make your business great. Next on the Eagle's Nest. I want you to tell me distinctively, what do you do? What I can tell you, right, this is a very good concept. But you and this for business, right? Yes. Expecting to make money? No. Right. We are a women empowerment organization. Where and how do you make your money? We also managed to get an investor in the business. I'm very impressed that you've come back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, you're sitting on, on gold. My question is, why are you back? The Eagle's Nest Youth Export Incubator Season 3 Thursdays at 1900 hours on Zimtrade's YouTube channel.